Hello everyone and welcome back to my improvement series where I'm going to be picking up a new character in Smash from scratch and showing you the methods that I use to get better and teaching you the ways that I think about improving at the game. Please subscribe if you like the content and if you have any questions leave them in the comment section below. Let's jump in. Today we are going to be talking about burnout in Smash. Uh, here are the chapters. Once again, timestamps are in the video description, so if you want to jump around to any specific section, feel free to do so. Uh, my topics for today is winning is a race, balancing your improvement speed, avoiding burnout, and my strategy for improving in week five. So th what got me thinking about this topic originally was that the, the weekly tournament that I had been attending every week uh, has been canceled for two weeks. And I also didn't go last week, so it kind of is putting me on this unexpected three-week break from tournaments. Uh, I wasn't really planning on taking a long break like this, but just because I am, it got me thinking about just like it, how people take breaks in Smash and is taking a longer break worth it sometimes? When do you need to take a break? Or is it better to just keep grinding? So the way I kind of think about tournaments and like placing ahead is that winning is a race. In many aspects of life, it, simply improving at something is enough because you can reach the goal that you want to get to. But when it comes to a tournament, it's not always enough because you have another factor that you can't control yourself, and that's the rest of the competition. You have to remember that everyone else is getting better and trying to get better faster than you. So in competitive environments, you have to improve at a faster rate than the competition if you want to pull ahead. So your results... It, you could be getting better at the game, but your results will be dropping if everyone else is getting better faster than you. It doesn't matter if you're 20% better by the next tournament if everyone else is 40% better, right? So I'm sure you've probably seen these bar graph videos on YouTube before, and I kind of think about like your skill level at Smash similar to this. So we, we have like week one, everyone has the certain skill. And then over time, you can see some people are getting better faster than others, and they move up the rankings, while others, they're not really getting better faster at all, and so they fall down. So even though like player one started at the top and has always been gaining skill points, they're moving down because everyone else is just faster at getting better at the game. So in terms of improvement speed, there's like two different strategies I feel like you can take. I, and we're going to talk about this with the analogy of the tortoise and the hare. So I'm sure everybody has heard this this folk tale or folklore or uh, what, what's the word? Fable? Whatever it is. Anyways, the idea is that the, the rabbit and the turtle are having a race. And the rabbit is like, yeah, I'm so fast. I can just run all the way, take a nap halfway, and then still finish. But then the turtle ends up winning because even though he was slower in the beginning, he was moving consistently ahead and passes the, the rabbit when the rabbit is taking the nap and wins the race. So the two strategies in terms of getting better at Smash or at any game, for example, is that option one, you can utilize times when your motivation is high to make rapid improvements and then take breaks when motivation is low or you start to feel burned out a little bit. So we're going to call this like the, the strategy of the rabbit. You improve really fast, and then it slows down, and you take a little break. And then eventually, you get ready to play again, and bam, you improve really fast, and then you take another break. Option number two, you take it slow and steady. It, like You go just slow enough that you never have to take those breaks, because you never feel burned out. So in the short term, method one is going to win out because you're going to be improving much faster than everyone else. So like when, when the game is new, the game just comes out, if you grind like 20 hours a day, obviously that's not sustainable, but by like the third day, you might be the best player in the world. But come like week two, maybe somebody that was just playing for like an hour a day is going to be better than you because they had this slow, steady grind. So when you get burned out on the game, your practice is going to become less efficient or less frequent, and that will lead to slower improvement. However, if you want to be the best of the best, you have to balance like how fast you're improving with your consistency, because you want to be learning as fast as possible to stay ahead of everyone else, 
but you also want to be learning just slow enough that it's sustainable and you can sustain that rate for as long as possible. It's kind of like a long grind in the end to, to be the best. You have to be consistent in your practice every single day, but it has to be sustainable. And the, this, the problem that I see a lot of people run into when it comes to Smash is that you can't control your motivation, right? So you go to the big tournament, you you watch like your favorite player has like some crazy loser's bracket run, and you become super inspired, and you're like, okay, after this major, I'm gonna start practicing 10 hours a day. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna move up on the PR. I'm gonna be the best. I'm gonna like top eight the next big tournament. And so you get home from the from the the national or whatever, and like for one week, you're grinding out like a madman. And then you hit the wall and you kind of just fall down and your motivation goes away. At the end of the day, motivation is an emotion and you cannot control it, right? It comes and goes and nothing you can do is going to maintain that motivation for longer. It's going to have waves, it comes and goes, but you can't control when those waves happen. However, what you can control is how you respond to that emotion. So if you really want to be like the best, you have to be able to practice even when the motivation is not there. Now, this is a really old tweet. I don't know why I remembered this, but I kind of, when I was putting this PowerPoint together, just remembered it somehow from July 20th, 2017. Uh, but for, it's from DeBuzz. It's kind of a meme, as you can tell by all the clapping emojis. But he says, if you don't practice at least two hours a day, you aren't trying to get good. Now this tweet kind of had a lot of negative reception when it was made because people were like, "Oh yeah, we don't we don't have, not everyone has time for that." But I think it holds truth at the end of the day that if you want to reach the very top and be like competitive with the top level players, it doesn't matter what other stuff you have going on in your life. You have to spend this much time every day with the game if you want to reach the top. Now there's nothing wrong, of course, with not trying to reach that level and like just playing 10 minutes a day is fine. But you have to be realistic in your expectations that if you are just playing 10 minutes a day, you're never going to reach the top. So to re be at the very top in like top eight nationals, you have to keep practicing even if you don't feel like it. You have to power through those times where the motivation isn't there. However, this does bring a higher risk of burnout, so you have to pay close attention to that. So let's talk about how how you can like avoid burnout. What are some other strategies that you can use to avoid burning out? So obviously if you're trying to avoid burnout, you don't want to play this game, right? Because we're not we're not trying to play burnout. We're trying to play smash. Okay, memes aside, avoiding burnout. <laughs> the biggest cause of burnout in my opinion is that you put in large amounts of effort but you don't see the results. Now, this kind of goes back to what I was talking about before where like even if you are getting better, if other people are getting better faster than you, then your results are gonna drop. So even if you're putting in like a lot of time, you see like, oh, first I was getting like fifth place at locals, now I'm getting seventh place, now ninth place. You could probably get burned out on the game really easily and you feel that like all this effort that you're putting into getting better is just not worth it and it's not paying off. We can fix how we think about this by setting goals in a different way and thinking about improvement in a different way. So I think the best thing you can do is break down your goals. It's hard to stay motivated to achieve something that feels so out of reach. So if you're somebody that's starting as an O2 player at locals and you're like, all right, you know what? I want to become the next MKLeo. I want to be the best player in the world. That goal is just so far away that if even if you put in like 20 hours a day for a year, you're probably not going to reach that, right? And obviously 20 hours a day is not possible in any means. So like, how do you stay motivated to reach that goal when it's just such a distance away that it almost feels like you'll never make it? I think the important way to do this is to break down your goals into bite-sized chunks and it'll make it easier for you to see your progress. And as you see your progress, you'll stay a lot more motivated and you'll be able to stick to those goals. So there's this common saying that like, or not saying, uh, like a, a a thing I've seen, I don't know what to call it, but it's a, it basically, you see it around New Year's, and I thought of this because New Year's is coming up, where it's like, all right, if you spend the next year getting 1% better at whatever it is you want to get better at, you'll be 37 times better by the end of the year. So if your goal is like, all right, I want to become 37 times better at something, 
that just sounds like insane, right? Like that's so much effort to become 37 times better at it that it's hard to stay motivated when your progress is slow. However, if you set this goal like, okay, I want to become 1% better today, and then tomorrow I want to become 1% better, the next day 1% better, these tiny steps will just compound over time and you'll eventually reach that goal in just a year. So it's, it's really easy to see your progress in little chunks that if you can break down your goal to become 1% better, it's going to help you keep that motivation to reach that 37 times better at the end. So let's do a quick little like goal setting exercise. Think about like where where do you want to be in one year in terms of Smash? Do you want to make it to your local PR? Do you want to top eight a national? Or do you want to just like pick up one? Do you want to just win your first set at a local, right? Everyone is going to have a different goal for this and that's fine. So just think about where do you want to be in one year? Now, here comes the, the part that's important. What are all the things that you have to do in the next three months to achieve that goal? So if you want to become like the best player in the world by next year, all right, well, in the next three months, you better be pretty damn good at like your spacing. You better be pretty damn good at like ledge trapping. You better be pretty good at like all the matchups, right? So maybe you could break that down and choose one of those aspects and say, all right, in the next three months, I need to be insanely good like best in the world status at this this goal right if you want to just win like let's just say like top eight a local right maybe it's not as extreme how good you have to be at that stuff but you could say all right well if i want to top eight a local i probably have to have a good like grasp on the matchups that i run into at that local all the time so in the next three months maybe i have to like get a better understanding of these 10 matchups right so just break down your own goal, where do you want to be, and think about the things that you have to do in the next three months. Okay, now let's break that down even further. What do you have to do in the next month? We can break that down even further in the next week, right? And you can see where this is going. What do you have to do today then to reach that goal for your where you want to be in the week? And then you can kind of plan, okay, I have to do this today. Uh, that will help me reach this goal by the end of the week. That'll help me reach this goal by the end of the month. It'll help me reach this goal in three months. And it'll help me reach my final goal for the end of the year. Now, if you're able to break down your goals to really tiny things like that, you'll definitely be able to notice your progress and realize that even if other players are getting better faster than you, you're still at least getting better at the game and you're making that progress. So that's all I wanted to talk about with burnout and setting goals and how I set my goals. And so we're going to talk about my strategy for week five of learning Pyra and Mithra. Right now, I feel like I'm finally at the point in playing where I have a pretty intuitive understanding of the character and like what I have to do in each situation. So now I want to start working on the specifics. One problem with Smash Ultimate is just the sheer number of matchups in the game. So I think that's a pretty obvious start for me. So I want to start putting time into learning matchup specific things and build up an archive of matchup knowledge. So if I want to be good at like every matchup by the end of the PR season, I think like maybe learning one top tier matchup per day is a pretty good start. Uh, I've showed my Notion notebook before. Once again, the link is going to be in the description below. But I have this page dedicated to matchups where I have, excuse me, a list of every character in the game. And my goal for week five is going to be to start filling in all of these different things with knowledge on as many different like matchups as I can. So I'm going to try to break it down and just focus on one at a time. So I think because my my goal right now is that I want to make it to the Chicago PR with Pyra and Mithra, I think a good place to start is look at the, the characters that the players on the current PR have, and then learn those matchups first. So if I want to be that good by three months, then all right, maybe in the next week I have to learn like just a couple of the matchups of the players on the PR. So that's going to be my, my strategy moving forward to fill out this matchup, this book of matchup knowledge, starting with the characters that I'm most likely to fight. And then once I get past the Chicago PR, just finish out like the rest of the high tiers or maybe like the matchups that are a little bit more difficult and spend a little bit less time on like the characters that barely anybody plays because I'm most likely not going to run into them in bracket anytime soon. 
So uh, the the time spent into like progress made ratio will be kind of lower on that. So I'm going to focus mostly on the most important matchups. So that's my thing for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed. And once again, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I will see you guys next week with my plan for week six. Peace.